PhD student, and now he's my collaborator, so the talk will be two and a half hours. Please stay. Muhammad, please. Hi, everyone. Can you see my presentation? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, three scenarios that we try uh, to uh, form ears in planetary nebulae. Uh, this work partially was done with the uh, NOAM and the other uh, I did the, uh, okay, so the first, uh, a minute. In the first slide, I will show you some planetary nebulae, uh, what I mean here, the with ears. So here, for example, uh, this planetary nebulae, we have uh, an ear also here, this other side. We mean by ear a, a small protrusion from the main nebula. Uh, that cross section decreases toward the uh, far end, monotonically actually. Also here, for example, we see another uh, ear also here. So let's go to the models. Uh, our laboratory is the flash code, okay? We use the three-dimensional uh, hydrodynamical code with adaptive mesh refinement. Uh, it's actually a re recent code. Uh, we simulate, uh, simulate three scenarios which might expand the formation of ears in the planetary nebulae. The first one is the ejection of early uh, and show jets into a, a spherical dense wind. Okay, so we start with a jet, show jet, and shortly after that we blow a spherical dense wind. This actually can fit a common envelope evolution as the stellar system enters to a common envelope evolution. The second one is the fast wind ejection into a slow, dense wind, and then jet ejection into the hot bubble. So it's actually the standard model that we know about the formation of a, a spherical planetary nebulae. We have a fast wind into a slow wind, and then we have the inner shock, outer shock, and the contact continuity. As we already have this shape, we start a jet. So the jet penetrates into the a hot gas in the X-ray and form a, an ear, as we, we will see later. The third model is an interaction of fast wind with small punctured regions. So we only have the spherical fast wind with the small two 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 small regions, and then we have the a, the ears in the planetary nebula. Okay, the first uh, model, which is the shaping ears by early jets. We have at T0, a weak wind fills the grid. Then the jets are active for Tj. Tj time is, a, as you can see here in the table, these are the cases that we have simulated in our paper. A alpha J is the half opening angle of the jet, and gamma is the adiabatic index. M2J is the total mass to rate of the two jet. A, at T equals Tj plus one, this means after one, one year after the jet, we inject the dense wind for 60 years. Okay, so the mass loss rate and velocity of the spherical dense wind are 10 to the minus three solar mass per year, and the velocity is 20 kilometers per second. So here I start with the artificial intensity maps for, for the simulations that we have done. This actually is the integration of density squared along the line of sight for an inclination angle that we choose here um, in the face on the meridional plane. So we have uh, several cases here from S1 to S8. Uh, we see very nice ear, as you can see here. Uh, for example, I mark here and here, here also. What, what do we mean by ear? Uh, from S9 to S16, we don't really succeed to get uh, the ears, but uh, it's really nice uh, shapes that we, we also show. Uh, here, for example, I show the density, pressure, and temperature for different values of a uh, diabetic in index. The density of the gas is actually high. So we don't have radiative cooling. We rather use uh, different values of the diabetic index. We start from 1.1, 4 thirds, and 5 thirds. We see here, for example, the pressure and the temperature, and we can easily see that the higher the value of the diabetic index, 
the higher the value of the temperature of the post shock uh, jet gas. Here we simulate a case in which we don't have the dense wind, we rather use the regular wind, and we still have some nice air also, okay, as we see here and here. Uh, here we uh, play with the uh, inclination angle, okay, it's also the artificial intensity maps for the first simulation, uh, for the cases S1 and S7. Uh, the inclination angle is actually the angle between the symmetry axis of the planetary nebula and the line of sight. And the ears, as you can see, disappear as the inclination angle decreases. Here, for the same model, I show density, temperature, velocity, magnitude, and artificial intensity, but the uh, evolution over time. So you can see that the general shape uh, stay conserved over time. Here. I also uh, uh, show here the same thing at the t equal uh, 136 year, and we finish here with 171 years. Okay, let's move to the second scenario. In the second scenario, we get, we still get ears, but different ears. So fast wind ejection into a slow wind, uh, and then jet ejection into the, a hot bubble. So let's see the history of the ejection, mass ejection. Uh, in the first 100 years, we have fast wind ejection of 7 ton to the minus 6 solar mass per year and 500 kilometers per second. And then we continue the spherical wind, but uh, with a, a lower density, 1 over 100 from the first the previous uh, uh, density. And then for a short time, it's about 10 years, we uh, inject, we launch a jet of half opening angle 15 degrees. The mass loss rate is 4.67 ton to the minus six solar mass per year, and the velocity is 300 kilometers per second. So we start here from 150 years, we finish with 900 years. We start to see the year here at t equal 450 years. And also here it, we see the more protrusion in the planetary nebula. Uh, and so here you see it uh, more obvious. Uh, the maps here are actually the artificial intensity maps. Uh, at the same model, I plot here uh, the density in the meridional plan. Uh, we define it the XZ plan, the meridional plan. Uh, so we see here the shocked gas with the inner shock, outward shock, and the contact continuity, and here we see the ears. What is nice here that we see the ear expand and almost at the same rate with the total nebula. And here I show the temperature. So we see the gas get to 10 to the 6. So we have X-ray here because the velocity of the, of the wind and of the jet were 300, 500 kilometers per second. Here we see the velocity maps. Okay, so he um, also with the, the, the arrows that show the, the velocity direction. Okay, so the velocity of the expansion of the air is almost the same as the uh, total, the general nebula. Let's move to the third scenario. So the, it's interaction of fast wind with small punctured region. So the mass ejection history is at t equals zero, the medium is filled with spherical wind with small low density regions. At the first 100 year fast wind ejection of 1.4 10 to the minus five solar mass per year and 500 kilometer per second. And the, at the t larger than 100 a year, we continue a spherical wind with the one over 100 of the previously uh, ejected uh, density. So as you can see here, we have uh, uh, the grid fill, filled with a, a regular wind. I choose here and here to have small punctured regions. And then I inject the spherical uh, wind. Okay, so here we start to see the ears. Okay, it expands also here till 500 years. I can continue the simulation, but we still get the same thing over time. 
Here I show the same but with that temperature. So we have a hot bubble here. Okay, the inner shock, the outer shock, and the contacts continuity. And here I plot a, the total nebula and see nice ears with the artificial intensity. Yeah. So we see we still see ears, but different kind of ears than before, than the previously two models. To conclude, we could uh, get eels in these uh, scenarios. And uh, I think in, three, uh, in the three models, we can uh, only say that we must have binary stars. I, I ask a question here in the second, in the third, sorry. In the third scenario, if, if could it be a single star? Since, since it's only a fast wind with two punctured regions, but uh, we still need to explain why do we have the, the two punctured regions there. Okay, that's it. thank you. Okay, so you know the game. He gave the talk, you ask the questions. <laughs> Yes, APN8, who raised the hand? Yeah, th th this, is, this is me, actually. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm twice here. Uh, Mohamed, uh, very nice talk. Thank I you. have one question for you. Uh, do the, the different scenarios provide uh, different results for the kinematics of the years? Because maybe we can check at the kinematics and, and help uh, mm -hmm. select one of those. Yeah, actually, I think that the second and the third the models, the, the kinematics are almost the same, or let, let's say similar. But the first one is different. So the kinematics is, are, are not the same in the three models. Okay. What, in what sense are different, Muhammad? What? I mean, in the first one, in the first one, the, ex the expansion rate of the nebula is, is, is not as the, in the other models. In the second and the third models, the velocity of the expansion of the ears and the nebula are almost the same. Mm -hmm. But in the first one, in many cases, we found that the ears itself expands faster than the nebula. That, that's very unlikely. I, haven't, I have not seen that in those cases. Yeah, yeah. What, what, uh, what I show here is after we tried many, many cases, many simulations, we, we got uh, these nice results. Okay, okay. Jesus. Hi. Uh, uh, can you specify or talk a little bit more what happens on the third uh, phase of your simulations? It seems that you reduce the wind power by one over a hundred. So why is this? Because we know that stars evolve increasing their winds very fast. So why do you need to reduce the power of the wind so dramatically? Yeah, actually, I, I tried the, both the models here. I, I, I simulated firstly the wind with constant uh, power with the same uh, massless rate. And I get that the, uh, the total nebula continue to expand fast. And to have the ears, to have the ears, you must have the massless rate decreased at some point, some point. So, so actually, you're suggesting that you only get planetary nebula with ears if the wind is just an explosive thing and then reduces the power? Yeah, yeah. You actually, you have to play with the histo ejection history. But in NGC 3242, we see that the wind is larger than 1,000 or more. 1500 kilometers per second. Okay, yeah. We, we, we need to check that also. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So if there are no more questions, then we'll take 10 minutes break and uh, we'll come back uh, in 10 minutes on the hour. The hour is plus 10 minutes. Okay, see you in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, Noam.